if they want us to use this instead of going up there, why do they put all the stuff in our way? That's what I'd like to know. Let me go up there and get a cart. What's going on, everybody? James here, readoptionagency.com. 22 years selling full-time on eBay. <clears throat> and I figured I'd start this video off with a conversation. Just something that popped in my head as I was uh, watching some videos, letting some videos play. And that is what resellers pay for items. Now there's there's some people out there who will uh, they will think that resellers are ripping people off because of what they pay for certain items. Um, the one I remember the most right now is uh, Paul Philly Flipper when he bought some video games at a a yard sale, and he got a, some slack from some people about he ripped them off. He paid too little for the items he bought, the video games. And uh, well, I'm here to say, I think he paid too much. <laughs> now they were talking about how he, you know, should have paid him more. He ripped people off, but these are this is coming from people who collect themselves or who go out and buy stuff themselves. So. First off, it's coming from a jealousy standpoint, first and foremost. Uh, and then second, it's coming from somebody who's not running a business. You know, Paul's not living in his parents' basement, right? I'm not living in my parents' basement. You had to get the items for as cheap as you can get them to make money on them. Now, I'm not saying you can't be nice here and there and uh, pay up for something. I'm not saying that. But the whole part of the game is getting as much as you can for as little as you can because you're doing this over the long haul. This ain't just a one day deal. This is a you know a lifetime deal. You're you're creating a business to go the distance. So the goal is not to pay up for every item. There's circum certain circumstances where I do, um, depending on the if you're talking with the person and depending on their situation, you know, uh, where their uh, income is, where their lifestyle is, um, to uh, just the, um, if you're going to have a relationship with that person, uh, they're always gonna get stuff for you to come by personally, then you might pay a little bit more here and there uh, to keep that connection going. Uh, so there's different, there's a whole, there's a lot of different variables to buying than just, hey, you ripped those people off. You should have paid more. That's coming from an ignorant standpoint of not understanding business, not understanding that this is not a day thing. This is a lifetime thing. I personally like to go by the rule of thumb 10 times my money. I want to 10 times my money. So if it's something for 10 bucks, I want to pay a dollar for it. No more. If it's something for $100, I don't want to pay more than $10 for it. Of course, depending, again, you got to take variables into situations there also. Uh, what it is, how long it's going to sit. Because especially with me, the way I do business is I don't care about sell-through rates. I ha I'm not worried about how long the item's going to sit because I'm more concerned with what I'm paying for it. So if I don't have nothing tied up in it because... I was able to sell two or three things to pay for everything I bought that day, then I don't have to worry about anything else. I don't have to worry about, uh, it takes a lot of the guessing game out of uh, reselling. You don't have to worry about how long it sits for. You don't have to worry about um, making sure it's priced at a certain price point so you can make money on it. Uh, there's people all the time who will overpay for stuff who have to mark it up too high and they're just going to sit on it and they're not even going to have a chance of selling it because it's overpriced. With me or anybody who pays dirt bottom for items, you can undercut people, move stuff quicker, give people 
other people breaks who are buying the product and you can do them a favor. So it's not all about what somebody pays for something on one particular uh, pick or one particular yard sale or whatever the case. It's a long game and we are not in it for a short, short term. So anybody out there who's dogging somebody, a reseller actually, if they're a dog and a reseller for what they pay for an item, think bigger. Think outside your normal little world of sitting in your, your bedroom at your mom's house and look at the fact that this person's got bills, they got a business, uh, they got to pay for their own food and they've got to have a salary. So uh, yeah, just my little topic to talk about as I'm listing today, getting stuff listed. Um, right now it's only 1030. So got several hours before I start pulling for the day. It is kind of slow right now today, but uh, we just started. Uh, looked like there was a little shutdown overnight. So hopefully we'll get a pickup here coming soon and get stuff moving again. But it is Monday. Mondays are always a little slower in the beginning of the day. But uh, yeah, great weekend. But I'll get over go over those numbers later on here in the video. And uh, yeah. And it's time to ship. All right, we are at 1.22 p.m. And it's time to do some shipping. Some shipping. So... How's the store been doing over the weekend? Well, let me tell you. So, let's see. Friday, $1,428. Pretty kick booty hole right there. Uh, a lot of that is, well, not a lot, but uh, a good portion of that is the trading cards. So, Series one, number two, the shipper. So thank you guys for uh, another successful card launch where we raise more money for Shriners. Awesome. So yay on that. Uh, still got some left. So if you want to get, still got number one left too. And some of the signed ones. So if you want number one or number two, before number three comes out, get them, get them, get them, get them. So yeah, $1,428 Friday. Saturday, $854. So I likey, likey. Sunday, $716. So drop down. Today, I don't know what's going on. Today is a, a little bit different than... Um, since I got today has been the lowest day so far since I've done the free shipping on the media we're going on halfway through my day I'm only at $181 so we're looking at about a $400 day as it stands right now unless something changes uh, which is not good for the change I made uh, being it's about volume So as we're talking volume, we're going to go. Friday sold 71 items. Saturday sold 80 items. Sunday sold 61. Today, 19. So we're on track to only sell 40 today. So definitely a change from the last week today. Hopefully uh, that will change before the end of the day. We shall see. If not, that'll be the first bump in the road uh, since I have jumped back into the volume game. So, which is gonna kind of shock me being I'm competitive on the low end of everything. So, I'll be surprised if it doesn't turn around. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> so up oh, now I'm at $200. I just had another sale. $18 DVD Baywatch. So I did not do not have that here. 
So we're at $200. So we're on track then about $450 maybe. So we will see. Better do better than that. Dag Nevit. Because if that's the case, that would be the lowest within the last 31 days. <laughs> so we have a... Uh, if today turns out to be the lowest in the last 31 days, that's a huge red flag, being that uh, I'm back in the volume game. So, wouldn't be good. But not going to overthink it. We'll worry about... We'll uh, think about that when the time... when the day is over. And if it continues in tomorrow. Uh, do -do 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 -do. So I got got about twenty four orders to ship out. Da, 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 da. So let's get moving on that. Day watch is not. Got any international? We got uh, UK and the UK. Oh, speaking of international, let me check the weekend with the international turned on. Remove. Because I always forget to do that. See what the numbers are. Wait a minute. I'm confusing myself right here. Can I do that? With this. No, I can't. Hmm. I have to go down to individual custom days for that. So, Friday with International. 1428 dollars. I think that was the same, wasn't it? Next day, eight hundred and fifty four dollars. And Sunday, seven hundred and sixteen dollars. Oh, I didn't turn them on. <laughs> no wonder they're the same, James. You just used this, you didn't click on the international. Oh, don't mind me. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I just work here. All right. Now, Friday, $1,467. Saturday. Nope. That didn't click right. Saturday, $878. And Sunday, $777. So. Today needs to turn on, man. Man. Let's do this and get moving. I see a lot of... And this has been going on for a while. Like, a lot of people, you know, their whole stick, stick selling point is sell-through rates, as I was kind of talking about before. We got this L.A. Dodgers hat sold for nine fifty, headed to Massachusetts. And it's not the only way. The only gig in town. So I'm just going to, I don't know, try to see if I can dive deeper into my mindset on what I do and how I do it for you. Just so that you know, you have other options. It's not all about the sell-through. It's good to find those items, yes. But when you do it in volume, if you want to play the volume game, it's good to have the some of the uh, some high sell-through rates mixed in the volume that you're purchasing. 
whether it's a huge haul from the bins, a huge haul from garage sales, um, a buyout of some sort where you got to take everything. But the good thing that you have about bulk buying is we have the Schaefer's Lubricants hat sold for $10.50 headed to North Carolina. Is you have what I've always figured called like the security blanket, which is what some people call like the death pile. When you buy by volume, it's easy to stack merchandise that's paid for because you can cherry pick your the way I always did it cherry pick the lot for the time you're in, the year you're in. So when I was doing it in 2010, 2007, I would cherry pick what was hot, get it sold so I can make my money back, and then throw the rest in storage and work on it at my leisure. But being I've already got my money back, I can go out and buy more. So it's not necessarily go out and, you know, buy 10, list 10, wait for something to sell. It's buy 100, list 10, get your money back. Either go out again or list the next 10 or then go out and go ahead and get your, you know, buy next, buy the next thing. And then that way you're stacking up inventory on top of it. Now the plus side to that, especially, and it'll, it'll work the same way, but it takes time. The stuff that wasn't hot in 2005, 2007, 2010, I was able to pull out of storage and sell later when the value of those items went up. The good thing about used merchandise is a good portion of it's always going to go up in value and or keep the value. We got this Adidas woman's hat. Took an offer for $5, headed to Ohio. So unless you're buying a lot that, or the lots that you're buying in bulk over time are all completely bad, it's very hard to lose uh, when you're buying by volume. The, the One of the best things about volume is the price you're paying for the items. As you know, if you go to like a normal thrift store and cherry pick, you're going to pay up for an item, four, five, seven dollars, et cetera, et cetera. The good thing about volume is it's easier to get your money back. You can get actually get it back just as quick as if you bought all high sell through rate stuff. And it's actually easier to get it back, in my opinion. Choo-choo train going by. Oh, no, it's a lawnmower. Oh, it's a large long guy, finally, here. Um, got this Accept, self-titled cassette. Sold for $7.50, headed to Columbus, Ohio. Take it, an example, if you will, like you go to, say, a yard sale, and it's a yard full of clothing, and it's all a dollar a piece. That, I consider bulk. All right, let's fill several bags or whatever with all this dollar stuff that can go for $10 plus. Say you walk out of there with two bags, you walk out of there with, uh, I don't know, 100 pieces of clothing. How many items are you going to have to sell to get those that $100 back? Two, three, four, five, ten at the most. We'll do, let's just call it 10 at $10 a piece then you still have 90 pieces of clothing to uh, on your back burner to work with. So say something happens where, you know, um, this week I gotta buy supplies so I don't have money to go out and source. Well, guess what? You got those 90 items in your backup that you can pull from and say, okay, let's get some more of this stuff listed. So that's kind of an example. I've always just, I've loved volume. I just, one reason I always bought volume was, what if one day there's nothing to source? 
even though that's never going to be the case, it was always there in my head. And it kind of came into play during the COVID when things were shut down. We got Outlaw Josie Wales on Blu-ray. Sold for 12 bucks, headed to Pennsylvania. You know, I didn't have to worry about anything. I have plenty of backup. Or if there's a month that I don't want to buy, I don't have to because I got plenty of backup. And then guess what? I've already made my money back from that backup stuff. So everything I put up is just profit minus the costs of, you know, fees and what have you. So that's my whole kind of, you know, thought behind the way I do things. Because every, not just every location, but every person's different. Say you're, you're older or you have a bad back or, you know, you're disabled a little bit of, for whatever reason. And you can't just go full bore and you're not the first in line. You're never the, the one getting all the hot product because you're working with a, like, from behind, if you will, you're, you're, what's a good way of putting it? I don't know. Like in business ways, you're trying to think of a good business term to put it. You know, one step behind. I mean, I, I can't think of a good way to put it, but then that's when volume comes into play really well. Like the amount of people that would pass up just a plain Eddie Bauer shirt. But if you came across 10 of these and you only paid, you know, 50 cents, 75 cents a piece for them, and sold for $7, headed to Arizona City, then you're going to make your money back pretty quick on just a couple of them. Plus, you didn't have to... You didn't have to suffer for being last in line, if you will. So that's kind of what I'm speaking, another example of variables, depending on your situation. Um, it came into real came in real handy when my, I was watching my dad taking care of my dad. Um, I couldn't leave the house for long periods of times. He didn't like he when if I did take him along, he couldn't stay out for longer than an hour. He just got too tired and couldn't handle it because he was on oxygen twenty four seven. You know, so I could leave the house for an hour go over to the bins, fill up the cart with all this low sell-through rate stuff, but there's going to be high sell-through rate in what you think is low sell-through rate. You've seen the stuff that I sell here and the surprises of how quickly some of this stuff sells and you're like, you know, it's not a brand name. It's not a something you would expect to flip in a day or the same, you know, a couple of hours later. I mean, that happened a lot when I was doing the hats. I mean, I would have two carts full of hats. I'd walk out of there paying 50, 60 bucks for several hundred hats, come home, cherry pick what I knew right off the bat, sell one or two within 24 hours, have my money back, and then the rest is just gravy. Backstoppers Project, someone to watch CD, sold for $6.99, staying in the area of St. Louis. So it doesn't have to always be about the name brands, about what's the fastest sell through rate at the moment. You saw some of the stuff I pulled from storage in the past few months and when it sells. And I tell you, I pulled this from storage. You, you've seen a lot of the high dollar stuff I have in storage that was put in storage when it was not really worth anything. So it's just another avenue. You don't have to follow one method to do it. You can incorporate all the methods together, mash them together. I mean, like I said, I'm not about not finding fast through, sell-through rate stuff, but I don't sweat it if I don't. 
And if you can mix those two, then you have the best of both, both worlds. Rachel? And volume is the perfect mix for both of those. You all right, Pee Wee? We got this DQ customer service pin sold for 420 headed to Texas, Texas, Texas. So his uh, it, irritations a lot seems a lot better today. He's not scratching as much. So he's got like a yeast infection that they've been trying to get rid of since we've gotten him since my first visit. He's tried he's went through two different antibiotics and none of, neither one of those worked. So he's on his third antibiotic. Also, what we're doing is, uh, since he scratches himself bloody, we've got hot spot spray. And then I also got a mix of apple cider vinegar and water mixture because uh, the, inf the, the uh, infect, the yeast, and it, it can't live like whatever it's called, can't live in that kind of environment when you spray that stuff on. So it helps kill it also. So doing everything we can to get him feeling better. Um, he started the extra uh, seizure meds. Um, after the horrible day we had that one day, he has been fine since then. She's going at it too sometimes so I've been spraying her down also but um <laughs> he's definitely a lot happier and perkier today than he has been with that little tail flying in the air like a shark fin so it's good to see Courtney what's she doing so uh yeah so that's good I just hope we don't that was the worst day yet uh with the seizures so we had to, took him to the vet. Um, this, this Exhumed CD Rude Boy cassette sold for eight bucks headed to Kentucky. Um, then got him home. He ended up having two more throughout the night. Uh, one about, I think nine, one about 1230 midnight after midnight. Uh, and he hadn't been peeing, so he, he was a mess. I mean, he was just covered in urine consistent, you know, after after each one. So the, the third one, when I, because uh, I try to get him outside so he poops outside, because he'll poop on command, not on command, but just instantly too. So I strapped him to the, um, well, actually Saturday morning, I strapped him to the banister and hosed him down and got in there real good. And then I also got not just the shampoo, I got medicated shampoo and then from the doctor. Then I also got like an oatmeal um, therapy type of shampoo, not shampoo, but just like a, a something you put in and rinse off, leave on for a few minutes and rinse off. So I've been doing, mixing everything to help him get better. So, but Friday was, man, that's been his worst day here when it comes to suffering. Right? What's your good today, thankfully? Yeah, my fluffy face. My fluffy face. It's lunchtime, so that's what he's waiting for. Uh, we got Yes, big generator CD. So for 6.30, headed to Tucson, Arizona. Another thing about buying in volume is it's almost like expanding a business. If you buy enough volume and decent volume, oops, don't want to do that. You would have it, you'll end up having enough to pay for if you don't have enough room in your living situation to get a storage locker and put it in there and then keep pulling from it to pay for the storage locker and then some. So 
So it's like almost like uh, you're, you would hire a person or you would, you know, hire out to do your accounting or whatever. You're hiring a storage facility to house your merchandise because you're expanding your merchandise. But the same thing goes with the, the only thing that's the same across everybody's different way of doing things is if you don't dedicate yourself to working your butt off because this is your business. Extreme more than words CD single sold for $6.99 headed to Virginia. If you don't dedicate yourself and work hard, you're going to fail. It, no matter which direction or which route you take, if you don't put in the work, you're not going to be around very long. Three. It's almost food time, kids. So don't be lazy. You can't do this and be lazy. Don't try to go over that. I blocked that off so you won't go back there. Pee Wee. Millie Vanilli cassette. Sold for $6.99, headed to North Carolina. Anyway, don't go back there. I definitely don't want him to have a seizure back there. He ended up breaking a leg. Or all four legs. And then we're going to be living in another kind of a nightmare. A 125-pound dog with broken legs. That's not going to be a pretty recovery. Now that's blocked off for you, for your own safety. Yeah. Next up, we've got World Vision Quartet. Jesus is coming on vinyl. Sold for eleven dollars. Headed to Elmhurst, Illinois. Doop, 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 doop. And then there's the other way, like. You know, there's the high sell-through rate. There's the rate, the way I'm, I am showing you how to do it, how I do it. And then um, there's another way, like kind of like uh, if you watch Josh Galt, the way he does it. He'll buy by volume. He'll pull out what he wants, and then he'll just wholesale the rest of the stuff. So there's always that option, too. I mean, there was a time when I was kind of doing that. I was putting 20 hats in a box and selling them for $20 a piece so a dollar a hat in a box of 20 and i was making two to three thousand dollars a month just on wholesaling hats because i would buy so many of them because what i would do is put the duplicates that i already had listed i just throw them in a box and sell them for a dollar a piece so there's always that you know that portion you could bring in too i've always looked at it this way the more avenues you can utilize the better off you're going to be at the end of the day I mean, I've done them all, and I've done them all pretty much. There's been a time where I've done all of them. I've done retail arbitrage, along with thrifting, along with yard sales, along with bins, along with, you know, I mean, everything. Lewis? Lewis. You gotta work and you you gotta enjoy it. You have to enjoy it because it is work at the end of the day. If you don't enjoy it, you're just gonna be miserable. College chapter one CD sold for eight dollars headed to New York. The only other, you know, I mean, there's nothing else I want to be doing, you know. I stopped playing video games because I play a real life video game. So, you know, this is my job. It's my hobby. It's what I enjoy. Oh, let's leave that one out. So, when you hear things like 
I work 10 hours a day or 12 hours a day or even at times 16 hours. What are you doing those other hours that you're not working? Are you watching TV? I watch an hour, maybe an hour and a half, two hours, maybe before I fall asleep. So I already booked that into my day. Um, well, everybody else is always out working. So, <laughs> you know, there's really no, no family time, if you will, because everybody does their own thing. For me, anyway. But um, yeah, if you got hobbies or whatever, you know, this is my hobby. So for me, it doesn't feel like uh, working 10 hours a day or 12 hours a day. We have this vintage to New Boys cap. Headed to Portland, Oregon, sold for $7. I'm just living my day, doing what I enjoy to do. Or enjoying myself, being happy. No stress, no worry. I'm trying to get back to the, the frame of mind when um, I was building the business. Like when I was building the business, you know, with $120,000 $160,000 total debt over your head. But yet I didn't have a care in the world because I knew what where I was headed, what I was doing. Um, the stress came from when Jan would question what was going on because she didn't have the vision to see what I saw. Uh, Huey Lewis Sports Cassette sold for $6.99 headed to Pennsylvania. So when she would get upset, then that's when the you know, a friction or the stress would start. So that was the only time when there was like, un um, you know, any pressure or stress during that situation. So I kind of, and trying to put myself back into that mindset only now, there's none of that debt that's hanging anymore, right? Because it paid off. One, there was two things that saved, that pulled the business out from that debt. The two biggest things. And this is another thing too, another uh, thing to keep an eye out for. Never be afraid to learn and change or to add things to what you're doing. Like, I've always been a shoe collector, but I never really bought and sold shoes. So when the opportunity fell in my lap to buy shoes, like in one month, I spent $48,000 or $28,000 just on shoes, buying shoes. I would, and the, the, I think it was the average buy on my shoes were $13. The average sell, I think it was $74, somewhere around there, because it was about $50 profit per shoe. That was the first big step that took a big chunk of the debt and took it out of play. So keeping my mind open to something else that fell in my lap. Actually, it didn't really fall in my lap. I was always shoe shopping, but then they opened up a clearance store, and then that's when all the bells and red lights started going ding, ding, ding. And then that was the biggest pull out of you know, eliminating the debt. And then the next was while I was taking care of my dad uh, before COVID. <laughs> but um, the hats. When I started the hats, I've said this a lot of times before. There was only 90,000 used hats on eBay. And I would have 10,000 of those 90,000 hats. And I was doing over a, about a, I was doing over one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year just in pre-owned hats that I was paying a quarter or less for. So that was the biggest other chunk that wiped out the debt. And then with the COVID, I got a little got those one percent loans, and 
after that, it was smooth sailing. So, got this Praise Worship cassette. So for six ninety nine, headed to Minnesota. But yeah, making the or uh, keeping your eye out for something different new. The hats were totally new to me. I'm like, that was just a kind of a spur of the moment light bulb thing, and it ended up eliminating most of the final deck that I had at the time. So it's always been about the volume for me. I'm curious if I got any shoes in storage somewhere. Berenstain Bears VHS tape, sold for $6.99, headed to California. I know I've got bags of clothes in storage that were given to me before I was even really selling clothes. <clears throat> like we're talking like 14 years ago, you know, people were giving me bags of clothes and I'd throw them in storage. Chances are there's good brands in there now that's probably a got a great sell-through rate, you know? So it's like, but where those are in storage, I have no idea. I wish I had a big, like a warehouse or something I could put everything in and sort it. That'd be the ideal thing. I got this uh, Snoopy night shirt. So for 1050 headed to California. Like if I had more room to sort my stuff, I'd be in a better position than I am. Joan Baez, Diamonds and Rust CD. So for $6.99, headed to Texas. Texas, Texas, Texas. On a negative note, <laughs> I'm at my lowest feedback ever for percentage-wise. 99.4 I'm down to now. I have never been that low on my feedback. So I'd like to thank eBay for lowering the bar for allowing pointless feedback to stick around. You're really making your brand and ours look great. So thank you eBay for lowering standards. Uh, somebody left me, they said that the, the glasses were polarized, which was not, not told, I was not, you know, not included in, the, not told about in the item details. And the seller was no help. And I'm like, I answered their emails. I'm like, no problem. I'll give you a refund. And this was before they left negative. I'm like, oh, sorry for the problem. Um, I'll definitely give you a refund. Go ahead and open a refund or open a return. And I'll go ahead and send you a refund. Never heard nothing. Whoops. Yeah, you know, this is next. Fins up. Headed to Paris, Illinois. Sold for ten fifty. So, oh, this is Margaritaville, Jimmy Buffett. Um, yeah. So, my, these people, and they got they they sell on eBay, and they're looking they're lying in feedback. I'm like, come on now. Like, how sad is that? That you gotta leave that not just leave negative, that's fine, but to lie in the negative? Come on. I answered you back and you know I did. So I sent him another email going, Hey, I answered you back. I don't know why you lie, you know, why you said I didn't help you. I didn't say it that in those terms. I made it more professional like, but so I'm sure they won't respond to that either. So what are you going to do? We got the mass DVD. Sold for $6.50, headed to Georgia. What 
I should have about five negatives that are dropping off in June. So if I don't get any more, I'll at least have five dropping off this month. So I sold for six fifty. I didn't say that. I don't care. If eBay don't care about the feedback, I'm not going to care about the feedback. <clears throat> I just do professional kind of do responses to show that I care that the negative was left and that I'm trying to fix it. So if there's anybody who looks at it, they can at least see that. So can't do anything other than try. Can't control people's emotions. Or their lies. <laughs> if they're going to lie, they're going to lie. Printed lay back. But today is just in the trash, man. We're at two hundred seventeen dollars at exactly two o'clock. So that's a four hundred and thirty dollar day. And that's not good with the current position that I am in with. Um, the volume game. But at least I'm still profiting under 50%. So at least still 50% goes in the pocket. So that's at least good. And then the new store is doing good. So. Just keep it going. Don't be afraid to try different things. I mean, I went back to something I said that I'd never do because it never worked. And this time it worked better. So, you can't think emotionally about the things, you just got to think business wise, you know. In business, there's no such thing as not liking something. It's not doing it because it doesn't work. And that's where I pretty much was with free shipping. And especially with the return policy, you know, losing out. But if I just refund them, I don't have to pay for the return. So I'm just losing the money that. Here I go again. I screwed up. I don't remember this name. I really should pay more attention instead of talking so much. That's that. That's what's next. Lures. So this is the green hat. So what was the one before? It was a cassette. Jessica was supposed to be a cassette. Why did I throw that up there instead of in order? Damn it. I gotta reprint Jessica. More actions. I don't want to purchase another label. I want to reprint the label.
I put it up there because I glued that pad on. That's why I did that. This is the hat. So nothing in the new store today. Poshmark did pretty well over the weekend. I think I had like five. That's pretty good for me anyway. Yesterday was my highest day on the new store. Got close to $200. I think I've got $1,300 and something. On the new store since I opened it. So coming along. Come along, little doggy. You hungry, girl? Want some food? She's all happy now. She's like, food, food. You want some food, baby girl? All right. Well, that is the midday shush, midday shipping. 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 All right. All right. Thanks everybody for hanging out. And uh Hopefully sales will pick up. Hopefully everything's going good for you guys. And I'll see you all in the next video. Later.